Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, or maybe more accurately, Live Rock Man. Those of you who've been with me a while are no doubt aware, but for those of you new to the channel, I had a crash over the summer, leaving me with only a handful of corals left. You can check out the video above if you'd like to know about the details, but suffice it to say, submersible pumps have lots of copper windings in their motors. All that copper is encased in some plastic, an epoxy or resin, and over time, that encasing can crack. When it does, you may notice the pump is slow to start, or maybe it doesn't run smoothly, or maybe it runs fine, leaking deadly copper into your water all the time. In my case, my little reactor pump was just slow to start, but by the time I took it out to inspect the damage had been done. Copper is incredibly toxic to most coral. There's a reason you can't dose copper in a reef tank to kill marine ick. It also casts a long shadow damaging the internal tissues of our coral and killing them even after it's no longer detectable in our water. So, my tank has been recovering. I lost all but one of my Acropora. My torch coral, Euphilia glabrescens, all but died. One head is hanging to life. Oddly, my Montipora were mostly untouched. One that I thought was dead has since sprang back to life, and most of them generally were not impacted at all. It's kind of interesting. Another coral that had no effect whatsoever are my favia and chalice corals. Both continue to grow as if nothing was wrong. All my fish survived as well, and I'm thankful for that. This tank really is for the fish now. If I pull back some, you'll see that this tank is really a bit large for the room it's in. If not for the Achilles tang, I'd replace it with something smaller. That said, getting rid of a fish that I've cared for over the past five years is not really an option, so I need to do some repairs on the tank. First off, I need to drain the tank down, clean a bit of the plastic bracing, and then glue it back up so that it no longer sits down at the surface of the water. At the same time, I'll probably repaint some of the metal bracing with an anti-rust paint just to be sure. Secondly, I need to be better at cleaning my sump regularly. I brought a little shop vac especially for this purpose, and it works pretty well. I think in general, I might do water changes by pumping the water out of my sump, vacuuming out any crud, and then refilling it. I don't have any sand in my display, so there's no need to vacuum the display, as I've got enough pumps such that everything ends up down in the sump anyway. I looked at getting a similarly Achilles Tang sized tank, and I might actually still do that. There's a company out of the UK called the Coral Spawning Lab. They make laboratory systems for reproducing coral. Think of their systems as a turnkey solution for growing Acropora. It has the proper lights, tuned moonlights, baffles to block any room light, a programmed apex controller for whatever region you need to simulate, and facilities for working with the resulting coral larva. I think it would be amazing to breed coral at home, and it's totally doable. If I do replace my tank, I could get a similarly sized system from the coral spawning lab and keep my fish and produce 100% captive bred Acropora coral. I think that would be amazing, and we as a hobby need to fully embrace systems like these to start a captive breeding program for our coral. For now though, barring a coral spawning system, the plan is just to fix up the tank that I have, rework the rock work so that it's not just a pile at one end of the tank, and then start collecting colorful frags again. A side note, I just randomly piled up rock at one end of the tank because I was scrubbing off algae one day. After doing that, my potter's angelfish really, really loved swimming amongst the rocks. This is a behavior I want to let them continue doing, and so whatever my resulting aquascape is, I want to ensure there are some rocks that packed, that piled up somewhere uh, where they can swim and hide. I've been looking at battle corals, and they've got a lot of really nice eye candy on their website. There are for sure a lot of great coral vendors, but I'm pretty sure I'll get some frags from battle corals to start. If I do end up working with a spawning system, then it's really more important to get larger colonies. And so I'd probably go with someone like Unique Corals or some importer, unfortunately, someone like that, and try to special order some colonies just from a specific location so that I can closely match its seasons and produce a spawning event at home. So that's really about it. I just need to stop being lazy and actually get started doing this. Maybe this weekend is as good a time as any, so I'll tackle that sagging plastic on the brace. Why not? Watch for future updates. I love sharing the tank with you all. Subscribe for more science, coral, and reef tank info. Hit the bell because why not? Stay safe, be kind to each other, and have a fantastic day. Bye.